All right, so we want to thank everybody for coming out virtually for our, our uh, October meetup group, the Source Collective. Um, as our returning members know, and others may know, that uh, the Source Collective is a monthly meetup group that Tiffany Wright and I started, Tiffany C. Wright and I started the Resourceful CEO uh, to create a, a sort of roundtable discussion group for entrepreneurs and business owners who are looking to grow their business. And we named the organization after the Roman god Soars of wealth, prosperity, and luck. Because we think that in order to grow your business, you need a wealth of knowledge, a prosperity mindset, and a little bit of luck. Um, and so our idea is that we will couple both financial advice, cash flow management, with the legal advice that you need to grow your business, provide a space for people to share information and talk, um, and then also just a forum going forward between our monthly meetings. And so we're very excited today. Tiffany worked hard to come up with a great topic. Uh, it's, it's incredibly timely for business owners because if you are a business owner, that maybe took advantage of the extensions that were available for your corporate taxes. Those filings are coming due very quickly this, um, this month. And so we are talking about taxes, getting your business out of a bad situation. Um, and Tiffany is going to introduce our speaker who's here today to share some great knowledge. And then we'll chime in with a, a little bit of um, uh, financial information and legal information and our questions. And we definitely want everyone to um, take advantage of the opportunity to put questions in the chat. And then we'll also just be able to ask questions live when the presentation is concluded. And as always, we'll put the slides um, up and available for everyone to get after the session. So I'll turn it over to Tiffany. Okay. So I just wanted to add that I know that Small business owners are typically not numbers people. So today we're talking about taxes. Business owners forget to file their taxes or make mistakes in filing and they get hit with high tax bills. We have Deltrees Hart Anderson of D. Hart Accounting here today to delve into this very subject. And like we always do, she'll talk about the problem and then present solutions. So yes, you may have arrived at a place where you have tax issues, but she can help you get out of them. So Deltrees Hart Anderson is a tax resolution strategist and enrolled agent licensed to represent businesses and individuals before the IRS in all 50 states. She negotiates personalized solutions for taxpayers with tax problems and provides tax planning strategies for small businesses and their owners. She's the CEO of D Heart Accounting and her mission is to keep the IRS out of the pocketbooks, wallets and bank accounts of taxpayers. <laughs> so Deltree, we'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Um, and thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. So we're just going to jump right into it and just know, guys, I can't see anyone because I have two screens and one screen is like um, one set of slides and then the other screen is for me to keep my cue. So um, I want this to be as impromptu as necessary. Just jump in if you have any questions and then I'll pause and go back to what we're talking about. OK, so. Again, thank you for having me and we'll jump right into getting your business out of a bad situation. So thank you, Tiffany, for the introduction. A little bit more about me. Who am I? I'm an IRS enrolled agent. And I'll just say before anyone asks, I do not work for the IRS. I took an exam. I passed the exam to represent taxpayers before the Internal Revenue Service in all 50 states. So I know the tax codes when it comes to helping people get out of tax trouble, helping businesses get out of tax trouble, as well as tax planning, not having to pay as much in taxes. So that's all that IRS enrolled agent is. So no one has to run away, like say, uh oh, she works for the man. I don't work for the man. OK, um, I do have a bachelor's and master's in accounting with a concentration of taxation. I um, am a tax 
representation specialist. This is what I do year round. I am Fortune 500 trained. I used to work in, oh gosh, I think maybe four Fortune 500 companies in their accounting and finance department. I'm also a real estate investor. I love investing in real estate, especially commercial real estate. I also present topics for the IRS. They'll call me for um, to do topics around locally, as well as the SBA, Small Business Administration. And I also consult with other tax professionals and attorneys when it comes to tax matters, IRS issues for their clients. But none of that matters, right? I am an entrepreneur just like you. I've had a failed business that I had to get out of tax trouble. I have to keep up with my taxes for my businesses and for me and my husband. So I'm juggling things just like you guys. So if I haven't been where you are, I kind of know where you are. I've experienced enough um, of my own tax situations and how to get out of it. Thankfully, um, was able to yeah make sure that we were not in the same situation and or whether we had to close the business or do something else. So, um, and I've had a lot of experience with other entrepreneurs that needed to do the same. So just know that there is hope. There's nothing that the IRS can throw at you that can't be fixed, okay? So just wanna jump right into our topic for today. So we'll talk about the problem, as Tiffany said. We'll talk about those consequences as well as the solutions, okay? So how did you get there? There are so many different ways that people and businesses can get into IRS problems. They can have unfiled tax returns. There, um, maybe you filed all your tax returns, but you just couldn't afford to pay. Things come up. It's life. That's what happens. Life happens. And you may have had all of the intentions to pay your income taxes, whether it was on a personal or business basis, and you just couldn't for whatever reason. You may have payroll taxes that you had the money just waiting there to pay your payroll taxes and something has come up, okay? And that something could have been something in your own household. It could have been something for a family member. It could have been the business partner. I, I remember this was a long time ago um, with, I think it was my first or second business. I had a business partner that took money for me and she didn't literally take it out of my pocketbook, but she wasn't paying her share of the bills. So she took, that was literally like stealing money from me. So I had to do something about that. She was a business partner. If I didn't hurry up and fix that issue, I would have been in tax problem because guess what? I would have had to pay a tax bill that she wasn't going to pay. Okay. So that's a whole nother story for another time. We can talk about that later. If if Tiffany, if you ever have um, any any space to talk about horror stories of having a business partner, let me know and I can share all my details. <laughs> um, so another reason you could be in in a bad tax situation would be a bookkeeper. You could have had a bookkeeper that could have stolen money from you. You could have had a bookkeeper that you thought they were doing the right things and they didn't. They didn't get the tax information to your accountant on time or at all, or it was in such disarray. So there could be so many things. And guys, these are just a few things that could get you in a bad situation. I'm sure you guys know of, or you may have a situation that you're like, oh, she doesn't know the half. Those those are not the only things that could get you there. And you're right. There are many other circumstances. There could be deaths. There could be divorces. There could be um, just uh, illnesses, a lot of other things. But these are like the major things that will get you in tax trouble. Okay. So now you're in tax trouble for whatever reason it is. The next thing is now what? 
Well, when you're in tax trouble, whether it's federal or state, whether it's income tax, excise tax, payroll tax, you name it, it doesn't matter. But whenever you're in tax trouble, things can start to happen negatively, right? So from a non-tax related standpoint, let's look at we're in COVID, right? 2020 is the year of COVID. What's happening now? People that are in tax trouble or that were in tax trouble when COVID hit and the government started granting different things or allowing loans and all, they couldn't get, they couldn't qualify for certain grants. They couldn't qualify for certain loans. One stipulation early on with the idle loan was if you were in tax trouble, guess what? You did not qualify to actually apply for that idle loan. Same thing with the PPP. If you had tax issues, then you would not be able to apply. Now, they did loosen up those um, stipulations, those restrictions a little later, and it was kind of hushed about it. But initially, if you owe taxes, you could not get the loan. Then it, they went back and amended that restriction and said, even if you owe taxes, but you were on a payment plan, if you had already settled or negotiated some sort of agreement with the IRS, then you would be able to qualify to apply for the IDLE or the PPP. Okay. Another thing that could happen when you are in tax trouble, you sometimes can't become a government contractor, okay? You know, when the government have all of these programs that are there, and I know a lot of people like to apply for those federal contracts or state contracts for that matter. If you have tax issues, then you may not be eligible. And then the last thing is some people that have federal jobs that need that government clearance, they're not able to obtain a government clearance or they may even lose their government clearance because they have a tax issue. So all of those things just keep in mind, okay? Now, when you have the, and, and I'm sorry, does anyone have any questions? Because remember, I, I can't see you guys. I'm going to press on. Um, and if I'm going too fast, just, just let me know, okay? So now things that can happen from a tax standpoint, when the IRS and our state, but I want to really talk about the IRS because the IRS is the more aggressive of the two agencies when we talk about the state and the federal. IRS is more aggressive, whereas the state is more restrictive. So if you owe money to the state, they have really, uh, of any state, and, and I, I actually have clients in not all 50 states, but a good number, I would say about 70% of the states I have or have had clients where I was negotiating tax debt for. The states give you a smaller period of time to work out your tax debt. The IRS gives you a longer period of time, but they are, they are more aggressive when it comes to collecting their money, okay? So what happens with the IRS is they will find out information or try to obtain information about you and your finances by any means necessary, however they can. They will contact your staff. They will visit you. And when I say visit you, they will visit you at your office, at your job. They will visit you at your home. They will visit your neighbors. They will knock on your neighbor's doors, okay? They will file liens at the county, whatever county that you may have assets. You could have a car or any type of vehicle. You may have uh, any real estate, whether it's a home, a house, an apartment or whatever, anything that's in your name, the IRS will 
whatever county will file a lien in that county so that if you try to sell that property, you're not going to be able to. That's just how aggressive they are. If you are doing any refunds, the IRS will take those refunds. And then, of course, everyone knows about the penalties and interest. They will, if you start off with a tax bill, let's say 10 years ago, and you still haven't paid that tax, just know that your tax bill has doubled by now. That's just how aggressive they are with penalties and interest. Okay. They will also force you to shut down your business. They will freeze your bank accounts. They will garnish your wages. And so this is another thing which a lot of people don't know. They, the IRS will actually contact your main contractor or your main client, your main customer, and levy your payments from that customer or that client. And they can do that. Why? Because they know who you do business with. If your business receives a 1099 miscellaneous from any company, the IRS can look to see who that company is and they can say, hey, instead of sending the payments that are due ABC company to ABC, send it to IRS. Okay. The IRS will also force you to have passport issues, right? Now, nobody really cares about passport issues right now because most people are not traveling. I know I'm not. My husband and I have said we are not going anywhere until 2021. And we don't, we're not even sure when in 2021 we're going anywhere, but the passport will be needed wherever we go because we missed all of our vacations this year. So as far as a passport, the IRS can revoke your passport and they can also cause you not to be able to renew your passport. And I know all of us want to go somewhere outside of the United States sometime soon. So just make sure that the IRS, you're not on their radar where they can actually mess up your passport. And then guys, just the quality of life. You want to be able to sleep at night. You want to be able to breathe. You want to be able to not think about when is, I know I owe this money to the IRS. When are they coming after me? Okay, what are they going to do first? Are they going to contact my job? Are they going to contact my biggest customer? Are they going to knock on my business door? Are they going to knock on my neighbor's doors? And all of those things, I wish I could tell you that they don't happen, but they do happen. The IRS gets very aggressive. They actually had an initiative before COVID really started up. There was an initiative to be very aggressive. The IRS, they were going after people over a certain amount of money. So if you had a $100,000 income or more, the IRS was going to go after those taxpayers with tax bills by any means necessary. And they were going to do those things I was talking about, knocking on doors, knock, uh, whether it was the business, talking to staff talking to neighbors, just anybody that would that they remotely thought that could help them collect their money, they would do that, okay? So you definitely don't want those problems in your life. Now, if you do, and you may not have tax issues, if you don't, you, you're golden and just never get in that situation if you can. But it is so unrealistic for me to say that people don't get in tax trouble. I, I would not be in this business if there weren't so many people that we knew of or that come to us that we get out of tax trouble, okay? And it's just, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It happens. You'd be surprised who's in tax trouble if you look at all these famous people, all of these politicians, athletes, entertainers, there are a lot of them that end up in tax trouble. And when it all boils down, they're just like us. So it's nothing that you can, um, you know, it's, it's nothing that you have to be ashamed of, if you will. Okay. So now let's talk about if you do have tax issues, um, you're in the right place. 
and you do have options. So when we talk about the options, just remember there are three important things. Excuse me, guys. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought I heard my, um, my door open. I am home um, today. So um, typically I try to get out of the office as much as possible, but I thought, I, so if you heard a door, know that I'm home today versus in my office. Okay. We're all at home. We saw it. We're, We're all, all at home. home. Okay. <laughs> all right. Good deal. Thank you. Um, so um, if you are in tax trouble or if you know someone that's in tax trouble, whether it's you personally, your business, business partner, whomever, just know the three most important rules when it comes to the beginning of negotiating with the IRS is file any overdue tax returns, okay? That's the first thing you want to make sure to do because there is no negotiating without filing all overdue tax returns. And those are income tax returns, payroll tax returns, excise tax returns, estate returns, whatever uh, trust returns, all the returns have to be filed before you can negotiate any type of settlement with the IRS. Number two would be to stop accumulating more tax debt. Easier said than done, right? Because as you make money, you will accumulate debt, but have a plan where you actually pay that debt, okay? So, the best thing to do is get with someone that can assist you. So we all, you all have accountants, get with those accountants and say, hey, walk me through how I cannot accumulate more debt. I know I have, I owe this amount of money, right? But I don't want to always be in the Owen situation come April 15. So allow them to walk you through how to stop accumulating more tax debt. You're still going to have taxes to pay for as long as you're making a profit. It's just that how you pay that money is going to be the key, okay? How you pay off that tax debt so that you don't owe every year, okay? And then the third most, most important thing is to resolve the tax debt that you have with tax debt strategies okay just how if you are have if you have a relationship with your tax professional your accountant now you do tax planning so that you don't have a big tax bill at the end of the year when you have tax debt you want to do the same thing you want to do tax planning for your tax debt because just because you have a big bill and just because the IRS is saying that you owe X, Y, Z, you may not owe all of it, or you may be able to minimize what you owe or reduce some or all of what you owe. Okay. It just all depends. So you need a strategy for paying off or settling or addressing your tax debt. Okay. So those are the three things. Make sure and file any returns that are due, stop accumulating more debt. And when I say stop, I don't mean stop paying your taxes, but I mean, make sure that you're paying in enough taxes to cover your profits from year to year so that you won't be in an owing situation every year. Because the IRS, when they see that, that's what they call repeat offenders. And they will definitely get, they, they're not, Excuse me one second, guys. No, I'm, I'm on a phone. They couldn't hear last time. No, they can, they can see you. Oh. And it's being recorded. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so the, oh, that's the second. And then the third, make sure and resolve tax debt with, with tax strategies. Tiffany, I am so, so sorry. I did, I should have just locked that door. That's my husband coming in, but I do apologize. I hope you can wipe that part out. No, you were actually fine. We we couldn't we couldn't hear him. We occasionally saw an arm or something pass by, but we we couldn't see him or hear him because you because your green screen is blocking. But I'm Thank quite you. sure it was 
it was probably bothering you. <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah. I, I <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So now I'm going to get back. Because I really apologize about that. <laughs> okay. So, um, and thirdly, remember to just as you plan to minimize your tax bill, do your current tax bill. If you have past due or back taxes, plan a strategy to minimize what you have to pay back. Okay. So, and we are almost done. So now we talked about that. The last thing is how to solve those tax problems. Okay. Now there are several ways again to strategize. It's going to be the main thing. You're going to have to come up with a plan to resolve your tax issue. There are three major pathways to solving your tax issues. There are more than three, but th these are the more common ones that people know about, okay? And the first one is called currently non-collectible. Some people call it CNC, some people call it uncollectible status, but this is the status that says, Hey, IRS, I know I owe you all this money. I cannot afford to pay you any of this back at this time. And here's why. And that is the solution. That, that's it. And then the IRS doesn't bother you anymore for as long as, back to number two, you don't accumulate any more debt. So as long as you don't get into that back tax situation anymore, then you are fine, okay? People don't realize how strong, how powerful this particular strategy is when it comes to resolving the tax debt, okay? Another way to solve your tax issue is through installment agreements. A lot of people know this as a payment plan. With a payment plan, yes, the IRS is gonna tell you you owe this dollar amount, but we want you to pay $1,000 a month. Well, some people may be able to afford $1,000 a month and they go on that installment agreement for $1,000 a month, right? But some people are like, oh no, I can pay you something. I might be able to pay you 200 a month, but I can't pay you 1,000 a month. Well, that's called a partial installment agreement. And that is an option. But there again, you have to plan for that particular option. And then the last pathway that people know and love, and I hate these commercials, but I'm about to quote the commercial. I know you hear the commercials that say, if you owe the IRS 10,000 or more, call us because you can get a fresh start through the Fresh Start program. Well, there's no such thing called the Fresh Start Program. That's something that the marketers, the advertisers came up with. But there is something called the Offer and Compromise where people, taxpayers, can settle their debt for less than they owe. Now, here's the thing. Of all of those three, number two is where most people kind of live. But numbers one and three are certainly options for a lot of people. With all three of these pathways, it's not as cut and dry. You have to qualify. If someone like, and I know um, these larger companies like, and, and I won't call any names because they're one in the same to me, but these large firms that say they help people with tax trouble, First of all, they are marketing firms. So they actually just have marketers and then they have salespeople talk to people and then they're like, yeah, we can do X, Y, Z. No one knows what can be done with your tax debt until they have some conversations with you, retrieve some financial information from you, and then have a conversation with the IRS, okay? So they have to have the conversation with the IRS so that they can know how much you owe or how much the IRS says you owe. Then they need to pull transcripts and analyze those transcripts to make sure that the IRS is accurate 
because newsflash, the IRS is wrong a lot of times. And then they have to pair the information that they receive from the IRS with the financial information that you provided and let you know what you qualify for. And after that, they you can start strategizing to determine what's going to be your outcome, okay? So don't let anyone tell you from one phone call that they can actually solve everything or that they can do X, Y, Z, okay? They can give you some options, but they cannot solve your problem on one phone call, just FYI, all right? That is pretty much it, guys. Again, I'm Deltrice Hart Anderson, and as Tiffany said, I keep the IRS out of the pocketbooks, wallets, and bank accounts of taxpayers. This is all the ways that you can get in touch with me. I'm on Facebook. If you like me on Facebook, um, you will get some tips about whether it's tax preparation or tax resolution on a regular basis, two to three times a week, at least. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am trying, trying, trying. So um, I'm trying to do better by uploading things to YouTube. Um, through my podcast, I do have a podcast that I do. Um, it's supposed to be every Thursday, but I had a death in my family, which took me out of the podcast for the past two weeks. But um, I do put my podcast out there on YouTube. If you have any questions, you can also email me at taxhelp at dhartaccounting.com. If you have an immediate tax problem or if you have a letter that you received in the past couple of weeks or whether it was you're just holding on to that letter for the past couple of months or so, you can go to stopirsletters.com and we can assist you there. And for you guys today, I also have if you need any one-on-one -on -one time and need professional help, there is, and I'm not sure, um, I don't know if I can, Tiffany, I'm not sure if I can maybe send you a copy of this link and you can post it in the chat, but um, I oh, am okay. offering, oh, you can? Um, I, think I, I think I can pull it off of your slide. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. So. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Awesome. So I am providing a 101. This is a private, no obligation settle, tax debt settlement strategy session. Can't say that too fast and not too many times for your specific tax situation because tax situations are like snowflakes. Everybody's is going to be different. There's no one that's going to be exactly like the other. You can schedule a time. I normally have these appointments at $299. I am having these appointments at $79. So, um, and also with that $79, should you engage us to provide you with actual tax resolution, we will apply that $79 to your invoice if you engage us within the next 30 days. And from there, guys, that is all I have for you. I really thank you for your time. And um, I'm ready for questions if you have it, if you have any.